questions first. Okay, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the April meeting minutes. Everyone in favor? Aye. Very good. Thank you, Trish. Okay. So first up, as part of our goals that we set last month, one of them is proactive stakeholder partnership. And one of our key stakeholders is the Radnor Conservancy. Um, so I invited them here to come and just give an introduction of who they are, what they do, and, and I think we're gonna see a lot of synergies, and then later on we can figure out, hey, how do we partner together? Um, so Gretchen and Laura, if you'd like to come to the front. Sure, we have James that's coming at all. James, I know is not coming. Jeff and Joe should be here, I assume. Joe's gonna be late. Joe's gonna be late. Do you know when, Claire? No. Oh, yeah, if you. Really the only person, you guys know who we are. I'm okay if you would wanna, if you don't mind waiting. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yeah, but no, that's a good idea. Okay, so then we move on to old business. So the Radnor Bamboo Ordinance. My understanding is that went in front of the Board of Commissioners on Monday, but apparently it was not approved. Okay. Do we know why or what it is that we need to address? Yeah, I mean, basically Jake Abel was the only commissioner in favor of the ordinance, from what I could tell. Um, there are, people were concerned that there was a fire disposal uh, issue and you can't burn in southeastern Pennsylvania. It, it, so that, need, that has to be addressed. Um, Rich Booker thought the $1,000 fine was, uh, was too much. Um, Commissioner Fari thought people should plant whatever they want and sort of drew a line in the sand about that. Um, the, other, the other commissioners were concern, more concerned about the township cleaning up the bamboo in, on township uh, regulated property than dealing with individual property owners. Bottom line was that at the, they are gonna send Shade Tree back a list of their objections. Okay. And we are, we are okay, I guess, to look at it and, and answer those objections in the way we see fit and resubmit. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I don't, I, I don't know how hopeful we should be, like, frankly. Like, okay. it, it didn't seem that people were that enthused about the, the ordinance. Okay, I guess all we can do is wait to see the list of objections. Hopefully, just as long they facilitate their own consensus and we can see, you know, a clear direction what they're asking for, then we can see how we can uh, come to some type of mutual agreement. Hey, Jeff. Sorry, I'm not. That's okay, we just started. Great. Okay, so, um, you know, I think what, part of what's going on is um, the initiative is kind of, through nobody's fault, uh, it's kind of haphazard in the sense of how it was, you know, moved into the commission without any pre pre setting the stage or uh, talking to any of the commissioners. Or um, I, I think uh, I don't know how conversant they were on the issue and why they didn't need to try to become more conversant on the issue before just, now it's tabled. So uh, I don't see revising it at, at a point of it being tabled, spending a lot of time and, uh, and then there's, well, uh, personally, I mean, uh, as far as, uh, you know, you could redo parts of it and you could find, you could, let's say they have five objections, you could, you could address all five of them, they would still have one they wouldn't agree with or one all the commissioners wouldn't agree with. What we don't know though, so I don't, all I know is one commissioner is, seems dead set against the ordinance in any form. Yeah, but that's one. Okay, that's one. Yeah. So I, I, my sense was the other commissioners might 
Right. It, once the fu that fire uh, language is removed, uh, the, f the fine, if we want to deal with that, um, the, the idea that um, to build in some language saying maybe the township needs to prioritize uh, bamboo in, in the public way. So, you know, but, yeah. but I think it's worth a shot. I don't think, yeah. you know, I wouldn't give it up, but. No, I'm not saying to give it up. The fire thing, I don't get that at all. I mean, we're not talking, the fire thing doesn't say go and burn it in a, in well, a, in a, in a can. Okay. Yeah, what, what it said was when you, you can't. When you, you can't, get when what, you, it, what the ordinance said was you can't dispose of bamboo right, in sure. any way, but um, right. But that doesn't it. mean you can't burn it in a controlled situation. But that's I don't approved think you have to burn it. Anyway. Yeah. So I don't. I don't see where that has anything to do with it. Really, uh, that just seems to me like a, a technicality that's being thrown at us on that. My suggestion would be that we wait to see the list because basically it sounds like the board of commissioners aren't aligned yet. So they'll work themselves through that conversation and they'll give yeah, us one list. I think that's right. Burning may or may not even be on there. So let's wait, take a look at it and see, can we find some type yeah. of solution? As far as the $1,000 fine, uh, people are familiar with Radnor Township knows it's a $1,000 fine to walk your dog in one of the parks. So a $1,000 fine for something which is, a, you know, a major threatening invasive species that can get out of control in the environment, I, I don't, yeah. you know. Yeah, I would wait and see what they come back with. They may even have a proposed fine, and maybe it's acceptable to us. But I don't, I don't, you know, I don't understand why where we as a commission need to do it. I mean, can't they revise it themselves the way they want it? Well, that I think it's good that we're being asked for our input. Uh -huh. You know, since we authored it, I, I do think it would be good for us to have a say because we're closest to sure. the issue. Okay, we'll wait. Yeah. All right. Okay. We have some comment on Yeah, this go right one. ahead. Laura? Laura Luker, Radnor Conservancy. Um, I did watch it as well, and I understand you said it exactly right. It was those basic issues. Um, I do agree with you. It should be um, brought back to the shade. The only thing is, is that it needs to be brought back through solicitor. That might be a challenge, time-wise, getting back to you. But I do agree that by you guys looking at it again and re taking out the, the burning piece <coughs> and taking out some of the language, which I don't think was really looked through very carefully, um, that there's a lot there, and they could be educated. The reason why bamboo should not be replanted, and the reason why it's really expensive to eradicate it, um, they didn't really know that. And they also didn't realize that um, this had been brought up by um, neighbor, or uh, town, town people came to a board, um, board of commissioners meeting and suggested that this would be put on. So we also at the Conservancy have an easement where the um, easement has bamboo that has spread into another person's property and it becomes a problem because it's really, really expensive. So I don't think we should throw the baby out with the, the water or whatever that is. I think we really need to look at it. It's important to have it on there. And for the commissioner who doesn't understand why it shouldn't be planted, there's great education about that. And I don't think that we need to fine. I don't think, um, obviously, the incinerating will happen, but it won't happen in Radnor. It will be taken out and then burnt somewhere else, because that's the only way to get rid of it. Um, but um, I do think the township itself, which has actually quite a bit of bamboo in various places, you don't realize it until you start looking, needs to do something about eradicating that because it's going to go into other places and it goes into the, into the systems and, and gets into utilities and so there, there's a reason. Thank you. Yeah, on the education thing, like I said, that has to be hand in hand. If we're going to revise this and we have an uneducated commission, so um, how do we do that? I think actually, Jack, what I heard Laura say was a lot of what I heard you say, that maybe this didn't go through because we didn't actually present it. So we didn't make our case for why this is important. So I hear that's what Laura is saying, hey, why don't we educate the, 
Board of Commissioners. Yeah, that's what I, my I, question. I yeah. thought you were right. saying the yeah. same thing. So I, I think we can do that. We'll wait and see their objections. We'll see how we can craft them into the current ordinance, look for a solution. And next time we'll bring it to the BOC in person and actually educate them. This is the reason why we're doing it. So yeah. we probably did miss that part. Claire? I, mean, I, have, I have a question. Is there someone who is an expert? on um, eradicating bamboo. I've noticed in the township, I've been now that I've been looking for it, and I don't understand fully what happens if you let it go, but I can see there are places where it looks like somebody round up. Is that? You can't round it up. Okay, like it looks like, but it's dying. I mean, I've seen a couple places where it looks yellow, not green. Is that just because of the, where it is in this time of year? Um, Could be. Or trying to yeah. thin it out. Or yeah, it goes through, it uh, yells out very seasonals in the winter. What I'm asking is, there a place where we can get really good information on the best way? Oh. Yeah, there, uh, there is a company um, that's helping. Uh, oh, sorry. I think Laura said CNC Bamboo, is that right? Yeah. So okay. there's, or Gretchen, so sorry. He's, he's uh, the gentleman, I don't know, I can't remember his last name. John from CNC Bamboo. I think okay. he's out in Westchester. He's consulting with um, one of our easement owners okay. and working with him. But I can connect you with him. Okay. That would be great. So, yep. Now that's a bamboo seller, right? That's eradicator. Okay. That's their that's their main business. Good. Okay. So okay. I'll put bamboo eradication. <laughs> Right. But eradicating it is a big part of it. Right. Okay. Joe, welcome. Oh, I'm <laughs> Okay. Hey, so since we have everybody here that we're going to have tonight, because we won't have James, why don't we move to item number four? Uh, Gretchen and Laura, if you want to introduce the Radnor Conservancy to us. Uh, so let's just close up on the bamboo. Trish, okay. you have that? So what we're doing, we're going to wait for the township to respond to us for whatever corrections. Meanwhile, we'll take into consideration how we can best educate, mm -hmm. especially the commissioners, and make another presentation. Now, I'm concerned that none of us really got to this meeting, because we could have maybe helped a little bit if we wanted to. Were you there? No, I was watching on TV. Part, I mean, part of the problem was this, this ordinance had been tabled for months. Yeah. So you know you don't you just can't call that that you don't know whether they're going to address that or not so well it, but then i agree with you though yeah maybe we maybe can set up something with the township secretary or steve or something that to alert certain people the next time that is ordinance is going to come up so that we can be there yeah. to, to mm -hmm. testify regarding these educational uh, issues yeah, and that's a good idea yeah so that's I, like, I believe that um steve did let you guys know that it was going to be on that it was on the agenda. Yeah, it, it, but it had been on, <laughs> the problem is it, it had been on the agenda lots of times before. But right, of but course he, it was tabled. He won't time. know if it's gonna be tabled or not until that, until sure, that evening. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. I think we can work it out. Yeah. to find my sheet that I emailed you about us. Oh. <laughs> well, I can start off yeah. just introducing us. Um, yeah. My name's Gretchen Grobel. I'm the executive director of the Radnor Conservancy. This is Laura Luker. She's our board president. Uh, Lorna Atkinson is another um, board member um, who's been with us for a number of years. And, um, you know, we, we have, um, probably in the past year to year and a half, um, just been trying to have a, a much closer relationship with the committees in the township. And um, so many things are going on with our, um, our trees and uh, with Emerald Ash Borer, um, you know, the, this, the state, of, state of affairs with, um, you know, maintenance trees. or lack of maintenance uh, in uh, right-of-ways and um, open space. Um, I, I just think it's important for us to have um, 
a collaborative working relationship so we can, um, so we can help each other. Um, so. so just to give you a little bit of a background, so the Conservancy, um, if you don't really realize, we do have an office in Wayne. We have about 11 board members and Gretchen is our part-time executive director. I happen to be president and then um, what we originally came out of as being a land trust trying to save property, open space, and it has kind of now morphed down to now we're advocates of the township's properties and making sure that the township is doing responsible, sustainable types of practices on their open spaces and their street trees as well. So we have gotten involved in a couple different projects um, that um, are tree oriented and you might be aware of them. Um, we just had our tree giveaway which is a spring program that we do and um, I'll let Gretchen talk a little bit about that since she organized it all. So, so, um, so we for the last four or five years we've given away anywhere between 100 and this year we did a, gave away 175 shade trees. Um, uh, there, we offered probably six different varieties this year. Um, they're, they're, um, the past couple of years we've bought trees from a native plant nursery in Quakertown called um, Ark Wild and they're all native species and basically they're um, we had a month prior, so probably mid-March, we have a sign-up sheet that's on the township website, and the only requirements are that you need to be a Radnor resident. Um, you can sign up for two free trees and um, agree to plant it and take care of it. Um, and then we have the, the giveaway here at the township building. And those so. are smaller trees. Those are trees you can put in your car and you can take them home and you can plant them on your own. Um, and They're four, like four to six feet. So that allows the residents to have some skin in the game and be able to do you know, their own planting. We do have a arborist here on site during the pickup so they can learn how to plant. It's a really, uh, really important thing to know how to do, otherwise the tree will not survive. Um, and this tree giveaway kind of came out of another program, which we call our big tree. It's, and that actually started with a woman, Kimberly Donches, who was our, on our board. And she has, for the last, I don't know, seven to eight years, been working diligently with the municipal, with the public works and uh, putting trees in Radnor, planting trees in Radnor all along the streets of the uh, township roadways. Right away. Right away. And in, in various, in some school areas, in the high schools. And then just recently, in the last two years, we've started to do a, uh, it happens in the fall, and a sign up. They're larger trees, and they are, in, they are installed by um, a contracted out professional. They're not like the littler ones. And these get put, um, this goes online on the township line, and you can sign up for them, and they cost about $35. So, once again, a little skin in the game. And they get planted, and and there's 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 more stipulations with right. that with those. There's only, uh, I think this year we did 35 to 40 because the trees are larger and they're planted for you. And um, one of the requirements is that you plant it um, in, in the right of way. way. So it's going to be in the front of your in the front of your yard. Um, it can't be underneath a power line. So there's certain stipulations. And um, I mean, the ones that I've seen that have gone in this fall, they're doing fabulous, really well. which is really nice. And so, and they're, it's it's a much it's a much more expensive right. venture. So I think it's probably four to five hundred dollars a tree um, for the purchasing the tree and then the planting. And I know that a chunk of that comes out of the money that Chanticleer mm -hmm. donates to the town to yep. the township. So. So that, those two programs, 
spring and fall, those are the best times to plant, obviously. Um, and the other thing that we do is we um, do Arbor Day celebration. And the township is been, has been an Arbor Day participant for the last 26 years. And what that really means is that if you are considered to be a tree city and do Arbor Day, if you have a shade tree committee, if you have an ordinance, an ordinance and you have, do you plant you have to a certain be, You have to be spending, oh, which I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if we are or not, $2 per capita. So I don't know if that is set, set aside, $2 per. So that's a, actually family. a really interesting, and we just finished doing it, and I don't know if you know, it was at McCrone. Clem McCrone. Clem McCrone. Clem McCrone and the township won a very prestigious award from DCNR of being one a of green, the a green park, park award. award. So. We also, Conservancy donated to that park and another park for Arbor Day about 25 trees and 15 went to McCrone and 10 went to Hartford and we planted them. <laughs> we did have one, we did have one volunteer at Hartford yeah. so that was nice. Yes. And um, we are watering them. Um, the township municipality is, uh, was not prepared to take on that help. And hopefully in the future we will work that kink out afterward or next time. So a lot of trees have been planted amongst our initiatives and we wanted you guys to know that that's something that we love to have your encouragement and participation and, um, and it's something to, for everybody to be really proud about. Um, and other than that, I think it's just really something that um, the Conservancy really truly believes in maintaining in Radnor a very good tree canopy, and we all understand why. So that is why we, it, from the Conservancy's point of view, it is one of our biggest initiatives. We have other initiatives, but uh, trees are the biggest. So that's why we're here. And we really know the only way to get things done is to actually go through the township because you guys have to kind of work with the Board of Commissioners in order to budget and in order to get scenarios, initiatives done. And I just wanted to mention, um, we're working with a couple of um, Radnor High School interns this summer. And um, one of the projects that I'd like to collaboratively work together. Um, uh, one of the girls is interested in, um, in working with you guys um, on trying to, to get just better messaging um, to all of the residents. And new, I, had, I know that I had mentioned um, it would be great to have all new residents, you know, like sign off on, you know, understanding that there is a shade tree ordinance within the township just like you know they have to check up check a box where you know they've been notified of a smoke detector something or other um, so so she's going to be working on that and and all you know once once things are kind of fleshed out um, you know it would be nice to to introduce you to her and you know collaborate on what we've what she's developed I, I mean, I do think that, you know, even, even residents that have been here, you know, 10, 15 years, they don't, they don't know, they don't know the, you know, ins and outs of the shade tree ordinance. They don't, so. um, And I just wanted to, like, I just wanted to, uh, you, and you can pass this around. We just did a mailing probably to about 700 of our members and on the front of our mailer, I just put a, a little blurb. Um, Radnor Shade Tree Ordinance helps protect the tree canopy, which provides habitat, controls stormwater, increases property values, and maintains the aesthetic nature of our community. Mm -hmm. So it's right on the outside of the mailer. Oh, you did? Okay. So, can, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know a little bit of the, the way you guys divide the leadership in terms of your roles with the uh, 
you know, as president and executive director? I mean, is it ba you basically doing the same thing, or is there some uh, division of? Well, we we really bounce stuff. We work in tandem. Uh -huh. I think we really bounce ideas off of each other, and we work we work very closely. Just basically the same things. So, yeah. I mean, we're we're working together on yeah. things, not you know doing the same same thing, but you know separately. So if that makes sense. Yeah, we were. And that's always going to change. Um, but at Gretchen is the executive director, which means that she's in the office. She's the one who's actually doing, working with all the funds and working with all the data and working with all the information and actually really making more of the contacts with the professionals and other organizations. So, and so she's I really in charge. Do all of the pro I do all of you know all of the educational programming, mm -hmm. community building and partnerships, right. fundraising, um, you know, depositing checks that we get, <laughs> um, you know, paying the rent, um, you know. But yeah. yeah. So Gretchen and Laura, I think that was a great introduction, and especially because we do have so many new members yeah. here. Um, so, and I think a lot of what you're doing dovetails into the goals and the discussions we've had. So I would say let's open it up for Q and A. Maybe we just want to start around the circle. Claire, I think you had something. Uh, yeah, well, really quickly. First of all, thank you so much, both of you. I know it is. Um, I've now been in working on township boards for a little while. That I've, I'm starting to see the dovetailing of the conservancy with um, our township, and I think it's fantastic. And I know it's. A continual job and hard work. Um, I have a quick, quick question: Is there? Do you have follow up on those trees, the big tree program, and the, even the little ones? I'm curious to see how many make it. And um, I did go on the website to look for the little tree to see more for interest to see if they were being and they were sold out. <laughs> um, and I went on at the end of March, and I thought that went pretty quickly. So um, it did. It did go quickly. Um, one thing. I mean, that's something that we could definitely improve upon. You know, just. I mean, even. I mean, we have people's addresses. We have their emails. So even, you know, like six months later, checking in with them. I think that would be good to. Maybe one of your a, interns would. To, yeah, give us some sort of data on how how the trees are doing. Um, I think it was two years ago, we gave away sycamores, and at the next tree giveaway, we definitely heard that a number of them did not survive. I'm not exactly sure why. Okay. Not mine. But no. yours did fine. <laughs> um, Mine's huge. So, okay. okay. So, All right. And then but that's um, something that we can definitely improve on. One other, one other thing was, would you both speak to... Um, your ideas, your general ideas about stewardship with working with the township on parks. Well, I mean, so we have come in front of the Parks and Rec Board and Shade Tree um, about the importance of implementing um, um, a park stewardship plan or a forest management plan. Um, we have over 400 acres of open space. The ball fields are perfectly manicured, but once you step into that forested area, it's covered with vines, it's covered with invasives, and if, if, if there is not a plan in place, it's, you know, it's, it's detrimental. Um, and and we, have, we have urged, um, you know, each of the committees and um, I believe we even a year ago got up in front of the Board of Commissioners and said the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's, you know, it's a continuous process which we need your assistance with and, and it's definitely uh, an educational piece. Mm -hmm. um, you know, getting out, getting out into the park and, 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 you know, and seeing what's going on. I know we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, setting up friends of yep, each yeah. park, and um, I'd like to see us work toward that yeah. from several angles. Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering if 
the best way to manage that? So, well, I mean, does it take? I'm not exactly sure. It's hard. It's hard to. We have. We're. We are not experts at um, rallying a big volunteer base. I mean, just a, just a thought, and I'm up for, you know, recommendations, that each um, commissioner rally people in their ward and the parks that are in their ward, you know, for engagement, involvement. With neighbors. Even, and even, if, it's, even if it's cleaning up, picking up trash. So the township did um, um, just like a trash pickup on the 12th of May yeah, along gateway. Route 30. And um, I, there were no, there were, one of our other board members was there, but it was a team from Valley Forge Military Academy and one Boy Scout mm -hmm. and, the, and some of our township guys. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, very, it's hard, it's mm -hmm. hard to. It's very hard you know. to get volunteers in this community. This community likes to have things done for them. And you probably heard on Monday night about cleaning up Wayne and making it sweep it. And you know, the responsibility should come down on the, the people who live here and being able to take care of their, their town streets or take care of their parks. Um, I still think that it's doable, but um, it's very, what, two things that are going on with getting a friends group, I think is very important and I do really hope to get this going. Um, it's, it's not that this friends group is going to be able to do the hard job of removing the invasives that are needed to be done in these open space parks because for any of you who have, and I really encourage you to go to these parks and to walk these parks, you know what it's like and you know that this job of cleaning up is, um, just good community time together it doesn't yeah. really do a good big job yeah. so it takes a lot and it will take professionals to do it and with it takes equipment a plan. Yeah. and it takes a plan can, can I speak to this just yeah. for a second and, and I just wanted to alert you guys that I guess you saw our agenda so one of the issues you're talking about and I'll get off that right away is uh, the the communication and the you might want to stick around for that in our communication yeah. at the end of our packet here uh, but I guess as you know, and I appreciate it, and I know you guys are working with that Philippone Bo Connor tract, and I guess now we're gonna be going on two years trying to do something about that. And, uh, and again, I, I second what yeah. you say. People need to go out there and look at that. It's just decimated. It's practically, the trees are almost gone there. So In very big stretches, the trees are completely gone. So Can really what it is, it's a matter of Understanding what the issues are. Mm -hmm. I understand it, you understand it, he understands it. Be able to say this to the commissioners so they understand it. And then to understand that a plan needs to be made and what's that gonna cost. Sure. I, I mean, it's really, it sounds simple, it's not, because it costs money. Yeah. But, and they don't wanna spend money. So, um, the conservancy does what we can do. We have our street, we have our cleanups. Yeah. It's not going to do the job. It might do a little dent. I mean, <laughs> it really doesn't. So these open spaces, which are like Skunk Hollow or Bo Connor or are Bo any of these fringe places, they're in such bad shape. We're going to lose all the trees because the vines are taking them down. Yep. And once the trees get taken down, then the invasives come up and no natives can come up and right. then you're stuck with just this overcrop of yep. bram bramble which and is already the hollow and the willows is a heavily heavily used yeah. wooded park so with beautiful things in it i mean so yeah but you know i i think uh, we'll be talking about this later i mean i was trying to apply for grants for our census and uh, also for that Philippa and Bo Connor to get, you know, there's money available to do projects like that. It's, it is beyond. I mean, the, the great thing about, you, you're right, a, a health committee would basically just help call attention to it. Call attention. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but um, it was very difficult to even, you know, 
to get the township to help us apply for money. Right. <laughs> now it wasn't, you know, it was a last minute thing, of course, but. Um, yeah, so, so guys, my proposal would be, because we're not gonna solve this tonight, no. yeah. but, and we, truthfully, we don't even have this as a goal. So we don't have it as, as a, we have our master yeah. street tree plan, but we don't have taking the parks and divining them, so to speak, to save the trees that are there. But mm -hmm. what we could do is look at it, hey, should we add this as a goal, and then is there a volunteer to lead that? Because I do agree with you, it would take a plan, and the plan is not, would be some heavy lifting. And this to, is a plan that, that you would work with Parks and Rec with. It's yeah. not just a shade tree issue. Right. We, we have worked with Parks and Rec with us. And, and yeah, we have Claire. This is well. something, I, I made a presentation on the, this to the Art Commission, mm -hmm. but none of you were here then, except for Claire. Well. Uh, Anyways, we're really um, happy yeah. to help you guys and, you know, do as much as we can and... Yeah. No, I appreciate that, yeah. but I just want to give others a chance. Ginny, did you have any questions or yeah, any comments? Yeah, I wanted to ask you guys because we're sort of trying to do some more communication mm -hmm. awareness mm -hmm. with Shade Tree and I wanted to sort of understand how, like, you produce this and mm -hmm. I thought your suggestion of using an intern at Radnor mm -hmm. would, would be terrific, especially for maybe somebody who's like a graphic designer type person that could put together flyers. I mean, did, did you guys have someone outside that, that put together one this? Of our, or? One of our board members okay. did it. Is there any synergies that we can, you know, work with them can, to help I us? Can or? I can, she's stepping away from it. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, but I can definitely, you know. Tracy once, Poulos does it. <laughs> once you, once you figure out what kind of content you want to put out there, are you doing, you know, are you putting it in a mail or are you designing it for your, for the website, you know? Yeah, yeah, the, sort of that, like all of above kind uh -huh. of thing. Multiple I'm happy to vehicles. And talk to you about that. Maybe, maybe I could set up a time I could just uh, sort of, of pick course. your brain a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Okay, great. But I all, I um, don't yeah. want to interrupt anyone, but I, wa I wanted to. just to mention um, this. So this has taken over the Thanks. newsprint, mm -hmm. um, the newsprint version that everyone has been used to. Um, but, but once you do uh, develop information, you know, information that, mm -hmm. um, that you're happy with, um, this, it can is be the, put in this is the township. I was looking for something that was in one of our intern projects. It's not so, in there. Oh, they didn't put not. it in this month. Oh, no, this is an old one. Um, but this goes to all of the residents. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you have something that covers Emerald Ashbore and this is the township's plan, um, you know, this goes to, not that everyone reads it, but. Right. Um, I think people are reading it more and more. It's glossy. I do too. Oh. Yeah, and so I are think you are you supplying the sort of content, and someone's making it pretty for you. Yeah. Okay. Basically, mm -hmm. although sometimes I'll um, I'll ask someone from Audubon or an arborist to um, collaborate uh, to provide an article. I I don't write all of the articles. Okay. Um, so I do look, you know, look to how can I round round sure. this out. Um, and ask for help within the within my community kind of partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and are you as the executive director coming up with sort of the annual game plan for how and where and when and expense wise you want to get sort yes. of your totality yes. of communication yes. out? Okay, yes. so you have a whole year game plan. Yeah. This is going to go in this article. This is going to go in this newspaper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, with the budget. Okay. And and we try and. We try and time that to go out right around Thanksgiving, because we have a you know people people like to make a donation before the end um, of the year, so right. it's important for us to make sure everything is. So yeah, so looking at the schedule and timing is okay. Important. Interesting. It's to important know. to us. It may be different. Yeah. You know. Can I ask township. what you're what you're spending on your on your <laughs> sort of communication hey guys, budget? We still have a lot more to go. Oh. Could you? Is it okay so if you meet offline? Yeah, yeah. Okay, offline. I yeah. think that would work. Yeah. Matt? Uh, I'd rather have the new members ask before I... Okay. Uh, I yeah. don't have any. Uh, thank okay. you guys for what you're doing, sure. but I don't have any questions. You guys, you're amazing. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know any of that stuff, but that is so impressive. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, is there still, like, are you turning people away in the spring and also the fall? Like, in other words, we is there more demand? We had a wait demand? list. You we had a wait, wait list. Yeah. Yep. 
how big? Like, I mean, is it really? Uh, 20, 20 people. In the, in the spring? No, how about? In the spring. Because the yes. fall is a huge dent, you know, making a big dent. They're like $400 a tree? Oh, yeah. Four or five. Uh-huh. So it's a huge I it's, undertaking. I think you cut a check for, the township cut the check for 20, 22000 something like that. I, I mean, you your, probably have it in your. It's in your budget. Yeah. Oh, that, is this part of, John, our, our is this our part of the, the townships? They, they pay for the spring. That is correct. That is the big tree fall. fund. The big tree fund, it's called. Oh, is that yeah. where the money's coming? Correct. Okay. But we, but the the 175 trees for the giveaway we pay for, so that was about 5,500 dollars. But the different, the only difference is with the big tree on the fall, it's just it's a project that the conservancy created, oh. and it actually collaborated with Chanticleer, and so the conservancy and Chanticleer, basically Kim Donches, put this together. And that fall planting and all the plantings on the street were from um, that point. And then she decided, let's do a little bit more in the spring with the smaller ones that individuals. So, and that money comes from us. Um, and that's done through subcontractors, which is bid out in the early parts of uh, fall. And that could be not subcontracted out and we could if we trained our municipalities to learn how to plant trees which there are means of learning how to plant trees by going to fill our Pennsylvania Horticulture Society they have tree tender classes and they have a municipality tree tenders class that maybe our five or so guys can learn how to plant which would be really great mm-hmm. And I would actually recommend if you guys like to do stuff like that, it's a great course. Anyway. Joe, anything oh, yeah. else? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Matt? Thank you guys for coming out. Oh, you're welcome. Presenting. Thanks, Matt. Um, as a Willows project moves forward, um, what, what is your interaction going to be with that? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I think um, I think we'll obviously, um, you know, introduce ourselves and open open. You know, it'll be a kind of an open line of so, communication. And um, however we can, you know, help um, guide them and whatever kind of questions or because it's like a multi-pronged yeah. approach have, there. Have you um, been kind of following? There is actually a um, initiative to create an arboretum in right. the willows. So there is that piece and then there is the mansion piece. Right. The conservancy actually is kind of stays away from the actual mansion piece, the brick and mortar, and understanding that whole piece. We're more concerned with the open space around it. Um, there is a group that is actually initiated by Sarah Pilling, um, who is a Radnor resident, who is putting together a um, with Bartlett Tree, I believe it is, and working with them to create a survey of the whole property in order to get a grant to create the ability for them to be an arboretum. And I might have that wrong. Maybe you have to become an arboretum to get the grant or to get funding. But they actually, I saw Sarah today and she was meeting them um, at the property to go to discuss the procedure of tagging the trees. Yeah, because they have some great specimens. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. You're being nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was very well said. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have nothing to add on except okay. for thank you for coming. And, thank you. you know, Gretchen and Ginny, you guys will connect because yeah. I think we can leverage a lot regarding communications. Um, and we can look at the tree planting, particularly the fall. How can we stretch our funds further? Maybe by having our own township folks um, be trained or. I think where Joe is going, if we have people on the waiting list and they're willing to accept trees, is there a way that we can plant more? 
Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, if we could give as much resources as possible to this, mm -hmm. you know, the fall tree plant. Well, now with the, you know, all emerald, or emerald, or yeah. all ash trees are going to have to come down if they have not right. been treated. Mm -hmm. So there are a ton of ash trees, not only in the parks, but street trees. So there's so many trees to be replanted. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I don't see why we can't fulfill that waiting list list from our budget, but we would need, unfortunately, we would need, to, we wouldn't, we can't take money out of the budget as a commission. We need the commissioners to approve that. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, we were going to have the budget on the agenda for tonight, um, but Steve wasn't able to make it, and then Trish actually had a nice conversation with Bill White, who is Township Finance, who can come next month and kind of educate us about how does the budget even work, and I think that will give us more insight. I think that's really important. Yep. I think, yeah. you know, you guys, we came last year at this time saying push it, push it, push it, because right. you're going to need a ton of money yeah. with the, with just the, the ash emerald, ash emerald ash. ash. And putting a plan in place. Right. It, it's just removing the trees, yeah. period. It costs yeah. a fortune. It you're does. not going to be injecting anymore. Right. So it'll be nice to know, yeah. you know, what, how, how to get more money. Mm -hmm. And good luck. Okay. Maybe you want to come next month to advocate so. for that meeting. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. thank you. Okay. So working our way down the list, we're on old business 9B. Proposed tree species for shade tree ordinance. That too went before the BOC on Monday night. Matt, do you want to speak to that? It was approved a unanimous vote. Mm -hmm. So that's done. Yay. Fantastic. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then 2018 goals. So they're attached. It's the very next page, in fact. And the open item there is basically just looking for volunteers for number four through seven. Um, you know, so for me, I, I'm happy to volunteer for number seven. I have a big passion around being green and environmentally friendly. Um, I'm also happy to look at number five. I'd, I'd like to be on five. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I've already started on number four, basically. Perfect since I was looking at trying to get a couple of grants, which I'm going to try to do again That's next right. year. Uh, and uh, I've gotten some more information on different grants also from uh, Barley Van Cleef. She sent me some more information on other uh, grants. Um, the township, I've, I've sent, uh, I did send a memo to the township uh, to apply, let's say, for the, the uh, uh, Philippone Bo Connor tract uh, to apply for a grant, we're going to have to have an, uh, some information about what the township is budgeting for that. And the, to apply for a grant, that would have to be officially a township project. So we'd have to have a project manager from the township. Okay. Uh, and the same thing would be true of the census for it to officially count. It would have to be a, uh, you'd have to have a project manager from the township and a, an EIN uh, listed for that. And I don't want to spend too much time on this because I know you're just going over the goals. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, Steve has asked that we officially, I'll get to that later because that's on the agenda later. Okay. Okay. Oh, about the parks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's great. And, I mean, yeah, I'd be I'll happy take that. To hmm? Jump in on number six. I don't, I don't know oh, if I have the experience perfect. that others do, but I'd, I'd be happy to yeah. pitch in. Yeah, no, that would be great because I think um, the Emerald Dashboard's going to be almost working with Ginny and how do we communicate and educate the residents? What do you do if you have a, an ash tree? So, yeah. yeah, we can find some good literature on that. I'm sure John can help us out. Yeah, yeah great. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Oh, yes, that's right. And I shared that link, Laura. That, that was the, uh, I think, 20-minute video I just sent to you guys earlier this week. You know, and on a lot of these goals, I mean, yeah. we're, we're running into this wall now that, you know, we need to communicate with the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. And we don't really now have a mechanism for community. I mean, our only mechanism for 
communicating with the board of commissioners is with Steve as our liaison. Okay. Uh, and I'm not sure how well defined that connection is and how well that communication works uh, from us to the board of commissioners just with Steve as our liaison. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a atrophy. And I know that we asked in the last meeting, and, and Trish, I'd like to have this noted in a minute, okay, um, that we, sh from my understanding, we should have a liaison on the Board of Commissioners, of somebody on the Board of Commissioners who we can use to facilitate communication about our issues to them. We have nobody now. Well. Yeah, nobody officially. Officially, yeah, I would agree with you. and and. I feel your pain. <laughs> I think more so, uh, right or wrong, it's almost Jake Abel because we have a relationship with him because he sat on the board last year. So yeah. regardless, I pin, I typically ping him with my concerns and he gets back to me right away. So I think it will either be Jake or he'll say, hey, I've had enough of you guys and I need one of my uh, colleagues to step up and volunteer. So I think in the yeah. interim, I'm okay going to Jake and I think we can ask for agenda time and then advocate for our own issues. I think that may be the way to approach well, it. Well, it's good that, that we brought this up because the rest of us yeah. don't know that. Now you do. <laughs> can, can I jump in and yeah, of course. make a clarification? Um, as the liaison between this board and Parks and Rec Board, and we do have a, a two board of commissioners that sit on our Parks and Rec Board. Okay. So I love this idea of having a BOC on this board. But I also want to... Um, make the point that the Board of Commissioners are tasked with beyond measure things to work on and mm -hmm. think about and talk about. Our Parks and Rec Board is an advisory board. Mm -hmm. This board actually passes some things and votes on some things for approvals in mm -hmm. the township. So I think what I'm trying to say is that things don't happen overnight, which we know, and mm -hmm. it's frustrating. But we, if we continue to keep work on the communication piece, mm -hmm. maybe we can move towards getting things um, completed. I did go to the Parks and Rec Board and say, we have some issues in our parks that I'd like us to be aware of mm -hmm. so that we could then have the BOC be aware of. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that it gets um, money allocated mm -hmm. or approved. You know, the, the BOC is a, is, sees a lot of things. Yeah. And it, they, they are tasked to keep a budget and not raise our taxes <laughs> too much. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a very a working, happy medium between all of these amazing um, groups in our township mm -hmm. and for what's best for the township um, comes from a lot of angles. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't mention, I didn't really say that I wanted a, I mean, I wouldn't mind a board of commissioners person sitting on this board. Uh, no, but I, but at least I'd like to have somebody who we just as an official communication conduit. So I think uh, the other thing is I'm speaking to is is that we keep asking for money to be allocated, and more, let's have uh, mm -hmm. township people plant trees. Well, they're already overworked, as I understand it. I'm not saying that they can't, mm -hmm. and that there's may be room in the budget. But that's our job is to make the board of commissioners aware. So I think it's a great place to start to mm -hmm. at least ask. We may not get them, but ask a board of commissioners. Maybe Jake would sit or another would come and sit with this board. I think we can I think we can invite them. Is that I think if they don't end up sitting on the on our committee, I'm still okay with that because I don't think they Agreed. need to set aside time to come to each meeting. We just need an avenue into the board of commissioners to get on the agenda to advocate for what we need to. I for me that would do it. Agreed. Yeah. Um so for right now, I will continue to work with Jake and ask him to ask for a liaison. And until they give us a formal name, then I do think it will be Jake, even just informally. And he has been very responsive. So, so I think to date it's working. So folks are okay, okay. with that. Thank okay, you, I sure. Just, I just wanted to clarify. That yeah. It's not that we've given up on. Oh no. Trying to get things accomplished. Mm-hmm. Okay, so volunteer-wise, guys, we look pretty good. So we've got Jack for number four, balance the budget. We've got Clara and myself for partner with our stakeholders, um, provide input on key issues. We've got Jeff and John. 
be green and efficient, um, I have myself listed. Anybody is welcome to join me. I'm gonna rope in Trish, since the bulk of the work goes to her. <laughs> so she probably has some good ideas on how to be more efficient. Okay. Um, does that sound okay? Good. Okay, super. Okay, now I'm going to D, Master Street Plan. So the item here specifically on the agenda is around the software selection. Okay, so this is the initiative really that um, Matt and myself are leading up and really Matt's got the lion's share of it. And last month we recognized that the software had already been selected, which was somewhat of a surprise to some of us. I think when we wrote the charter, we thought that we would be selecting the software. We didn't indicate the process, but I think that was just the general assumption. And we learned through Steve that really the way what happened is that due to all the storms in the winter, Radnor Township residents were complaining and concerned about their trees. Bob Zinkowski made a decision to say, okay, let's go out and get a software. We know this committee right here is gonna support doing it an actual survey um, in which we'll understand what trees we have, what we don't, and then how to fill those gaps. Um, and then the township made the decision to purchase um, Urban Forest Matrix. So in trying to make that decision more transparent so everybody would be comfortable with it, I did some of my own independent research. I looked at this software, I looked at iTree, and I could not find an objective assessment online comparing the two softwares. So what I concluded is they're kind of apples and oranges. iTree, Matt and I learned that's what New York City had used when they did their tree survey, which is a very user-friendly, basic tool, um, highly mobile, but doesn't have the report generation or the ability to collect comprehensive data that Urban Forest Matrix has. So I looked at that whole category of softwares and it came as one of the most highly rated softwares. There's others that look competitive with it, but it was one of the most highly rated ones, so it looked good to me. I then talked to John. You said that you've used both in your um, career. The past six years. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you have a clear preference on the urban forest matrix? Yeah, they're apples and oranges, as you stated. Okay. Yep. okay. iTree is very generic, very basic, made for the volunteer, um, but there is no follow up for years after for longevity or following up the cycles of maintenance. Okay. And I must admit, I was a fan of made for the volunteer easy. But I was glad to see Matt has already tried out Urban Forest Matrix because my one concern was that it would be too complex for, for us to use and it would take too long for us to gather data. But Matt, I know you've been testing this software out and you seem to like it. I find it to be uh, wonderfully intuitive. Um, I'm not a beginner with trees. Okay. I mean, I, I volunteer at uh, the Henry uh, Foundation, which is, uh, they have a lot of rare specimens of trees and I, so I'm, I've, what I'm finding is in, after about 16 hours of work, it, the reports that this produces enable you to look at, a, look at an ash tree this month, look at an ash tree five months from now, look at that same ash tree a year from now, and all that information goes into one report. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, this thing maps the condition of your tree canopy over time. It takes photos for you from the iPad right onto the app. It, you touch the tree and it puts GPS location on it. So in, in two days, I've spent two days, about I would say about 10 hours, and I've done a quarter of Ordericio. So I've done you know, upwards of 50 trees in Ordericio. And now it takes six minutes per tree because I'm doing it myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the tree, I'm putting in the conditions, and these conditions run the entire gamut from the root condition to the foliage condition. So what I'm going to, my wife is actually going to help me. So I'm going to be able to call out all the conditions, the height, the DBH, all the, the general characteristics of the tree. I'm going to be able to call this out and she, she'll be able to put this in. It's really a two person, I think a two person job because it's too, it's very awkward to be 
manipulating this while you're looking at the tree. But the end product is uh, remarkable. And uh, you know, I can send around a test report to anyone who's interested to see what one quarter order of receipt looks like. What it really looks like is a big problem for ash. I mean, it's, ash is a predominant tree there. They're all unstable. Uh, I started street looking at street trees just for practice around my neighborhood. And there, there are a few black locusts, but ash is it. And uh, it's, uh, as you go down toward the elementary school, Wayne Elementary, it's 40 dBH ashes, one after the other, all in decline. So it's, it's, it's I think this program is gonna historically enlighten not only us here, but um, the township, uh, the people who actually make decisions in the township. And you know, it, it doesn't lie. It's just like, it's gonna be a record. It's gonna be a historical record of, of Radnor's park trees and street trees. And you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can cut the six minutes down to maybe four. What do you think? Should be two. Should be two. The goal is two. I'm hoping your marriage oh. survives. Well, Jane, Jane was on the Shade Tree Commission two cycles, and she was chair, so she's into it. Um, and she's and she knows she knows more about trees than I do, so that's it's a good pairing. John Ward is uh, the founder of Ward Trees has volunteered his time as well. That's great. So I think. Yeah. We're tree vendors. <laughs> you know, and there are tree vendors in Radnor. Well, you need to send me a list of names. <laughs> Because I'm sure, I'm sure it's you know the, there is a volunteer aspect to this, uh, but I think the per, you have to have the right people calling out the conditions, the species, taking the measurements correctly. Um, so that that has to be a controlled environment. I don't, I really don't want uh, rank amateurs doing that work. But they can load this, you know, they can load the the, the app. So it's Matt, you're doing a great job, and thank you. Oh no, it's great work, and I, I think it's, as Bob C. said, it's long overdue, so. Um, and thank you for your help, John, so great. So I did only look at those two softwares because they seem to be the most popular ones, and I do understand this whole con conversation is somewhat retrospective, because the township has decided this is the software they want to go forward with, but I did want to make it transparent as to, if we were to be involved in the decision, I think this is somewhat what it would look like. But any questions, any concerns? Well, Go ahead, yeah. Jack. Uh, I, I think we're, I'm, I'm sort of looking more at the forest rather than the trees to okay. use upon here. Uh, at the, the full scope of this, and if anybody's looking at, uh, I mean, again, we know that uh, Matt is not going to do this whole census, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I'm sort of starting. Okay. Yeah, but well, I do but think that's, that's fair. If, if some, we do need some backup or some more support. I think that's a fair comment. Yeah, I mean, I think we need to look at the scope of, of how many, basically, how many trees and how many streets we're going to be looking at. Uh, and at this point, we're doing six minutes a tree. But I mean, it, we're we're coming from this perspective of Matt's doing it, and I don't think that's the, in the big picture, the perspective we need. We need, if we're going to, uh, and I don't even know if we can do this without the township approving it, which they haven't done yet. So I, I think we can, and I think on our charter, we had down that we need to identify the individuals that would be conducting the survey. Even if we did something like iTree, we still had to identify who's going to be doing this. And I just think that with our software selection being urban forest matrix, we just, we want a smaller group, a more well-trained group to do no, this. But, but you're right, we still have to figure out who is doing that in addition to Matt well, and Jane. I, I think I, I, I'm not comfortable that we can start do this without the Board of Commissioners approving it. Why Actually go that? into it. Because well, all we agreed to do was plan this. Because mm -hmm. it's a project, it's a township project. But we came up with a charter. We got the funds in order to buy the software. We're going to conduct the survey, which is free. It's our volunteer time. We'll come up with a plan to replace the trees. Friends, let me just and say, then we will request funds. Let's suppose we, we get more volunteers on this, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to get more software. Or let's suppose those volunteers go out and a branch falls and hits one of them in the head. 
okay? And the townships, and, and you know, they, uh, and all of a sudden we're, we're, we're looking at a liability situation and we haven't even gotten the Board of Commissioners to approve what we're doing out there. I don't believe, and I, I wish Steve were here for this, but I don't believe we can do this. We can plan it. I, th I only agreed to plan this. And the point, my assumption was at the point that we had the plan that we wanted to do a master tree census for Radnor Township, that then we would take our plan to the Board of Commissioners to approve it. And we were talking about, at one point we were actually talking about uh, ha having this done professionally, and which, was, which we might have been able to do if I was able to uh, apply for that uh, grant to do that. Part of that applying for that grant would be to get some professional help. So I, I just don't think we can, I think we can plan this, but I don't think we can start a master tree list census without the Board of Commissioners approve it and it'd be illegal. I don't know of any reason why we can't do it. I think the Board of Commissioners has appointed us to this role. I think we're able to come up with initiatives and, and goals, and I think we're able to carry them out, and where we need funding, we need to ask for it. We're not touching any trees. We're not taking them down. We're not putting them up. Nothing changes in Radnor Township. All we're doing is collecting information right now. Again, that's just my, you know, it doesn't make any difference to me. If we, are, if we can do it, fine. I, my, but if my, we, if my we can't do it, then we, well, we, we should, can't. We, we should can't. Get we room. can do it, and we will. And we will do it. And I'll tell you, there's a sense of urgency in Radnor right now, from the from the manager down, that we have a big problem on our hands, and we need to know what the problem is. We need to identify the problem. As if the Shade Tree Commission can't identify tree problems in their township without going to the Board of Commissioners, shame on Radnor. I dare any commissioner to say that a tree census. Is a bad idea. No, it's, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad not idea. Well, then, they'll, then they would approve it. Why did the township manager mandate me to start doing this if, if it was not going to be approved? Since, since you didn't bring that to us, I don't know. But we, they, well, I just explained the process. So Bob Zinkowski made the decision because residents okay. were concerned about the storms. He said, go ahead and buy the software. He was aware of the initiative that we had. Um, so I, I must admit, I don't see any obstacle. John? So I think we're jumping way ahead here. So obviously Matt is in the realm of learning the program, Urban mm -hmm. Forest Matrix. I estimate it's going to take Matt probably three to four months to fully understand this program. Um, I had Urban Forest Matrix slim down the amount of data collection mm -hmm. for Radnor Township, which then obviously reduced our price. Me and Matt have talked numerous occasions. Our goal is later on to get some volunteers, which will obviously sign a release form, just like we do when we're doing the vine removal and vine cutting. At that point, we will start doing training, just as tree tenders or any other organization that does training. I'm hoping to get a maybe a, a model of 10 to 15 volunteers. We can break up different weekends, hand the iPad over, um, map out the direction we want to go, and I'm hoping within two years, we can assess most of the big trees um, after we have full implementation and the, the volunteer program. So this is a long-term program. It's not happening in 2018. This is 2019, 20, maybe even the 21. But we need to start um, to have a program like this done through a professional agency, such as my firm or ACRT or some of these other companies, you're looking couple hundred thousand dollars when it's all said and done so we don't have that money in the budget obviously Steve Norsini has mentioned that numerous occasions yeah. so this is a great start volunteer it'll hopefully bring more volunteers to our group um, as Gretchen pointed out we need to build our volunteer base and I think this is a great way to do it because you're out on the street you're meeting people mm -hmm. um, and we do have risk you know there's risk every day we walk out so I mean release forms always resolve those mm -hmm. um, so now we have a lot to do and a lot to learn on your parts but we're working towards that goal of managing our streetscape it's going to take time and I think this is a great start and I uh, applaud you Matt for your efforts yeah. and guys just one reminder we did say in the Charter that we would do a phased approach so we're, we're not going to try and do Radnor Township all at once so one of the things we had on the last agenda we just didn't get to it was do we want to do um, 
a one mile circle, let's say around the most dense populated area, meaning the downtown Wayne. Basically just draw a one mile ring around it or a one mile square. Um, so we could do the census there and then actually start to look at the gaps in the planning. So that kind of becomes your pilot. Once you say, okay, this is going well, then you expand it to a two mile square and you adjust. Whatever, that two, whatever your learnings are from the one mile square, you adjust those behaviors and actions in your two mile square. So I think that, that was the idea. So we don't have to wait, let's say, three years to actually start planting trees. We would do it in a phased approach. And then the last phase was the parks. So just that's, that's what, that was our thinking around the phased approach. My recommendation is that we officially formalize a plan to do this and at least check with council to make to see whether we can then approve the actually doing this census ourselves or whether we need the board of commissioners to approve it and if it's such a great plan we won't have any problem getting the board of commissioners to approve it and then we don't have to worry about being criticized back door that, that we walked off on our own we are an advisory committee the, the only things we can do different than parks is the areas that the board of commissioners allows us to so we can vote on these plans because we the board of commissioners has given us the authority to do that the board of commissioners have not given us the authority to do a master street plan for radnor township as far as i'm concerned Okay. So what if and we, I wouldn't want them to all of a sudden realize we're doing this right. so or something we, to go wrong and then say, how come you guys didn't, you guys don't have the authority to do this. How come you didn't come to us? So why don't we strike a compromise? Why don't we do the two in parallel? We're not going to touch anything in Radnor Township. will cause no harm while we're gathering sure, data. Sure, that's fine. So let's go ahead and continue. We already have yeah. an approved plan. We, we approved it at one of our previous meetings. It's the charter and the dashboard. Right. I can contact Jake and say, would you like us to present this to the Board of Commissioners and obtain approval? And I'll share whatever his response is. Sure, that's exactly what I'm saying. We have, I, I, I said we had the authority to, a, to start a plan to do yeah. this, which I agree, and mm -hmm. that's what we were doing. But at some point, we went from approving, to making a plan to implementing the actual census. And I think, you know, so I think the cart's getting ahead of the horse here. Okay, fair enough. Any other questions about the master street plan? Okay, super. Item F, communications. It's known, it was originally education awareness. This is what Ginny, Joe, and James have been working on. So Ginny, do you wanna give us an update? Sure. I feel like I've just sort of started to scratch the surface on all this. Um, my main objective this past month was to find someone that we could work with that could sort of put together an overall communication plan. Um, and we were given a few names. Eileen, I think, you know, you and I went back and forth with a few of them, but I don't think we found the right person yet to work with because the, um, the one fellow, uh, the Steve Graham, who seems to be uh, very knowledgeable, they, but they do very large projects like Lincoln Financial, for instance, is one of their customers. Um, but he could handle everything, soup to nuts. We could just say, look, here's, here's the message that we want to get out on all of those topics. Come up with a game plan. How do we do it? What, what time schedule? Give me a budget. He could, he could do all of it soup to nuts. But he needs $3,000 minimum for any kind of project, be it um, uh, just to create an individual pieces like a flyer or a newsletter or, or an advertisement kind of thing or be it create the whole communication awareness package so I, I had no idea what our input was on budget what we were interested in spending so I sort of left it with him that I would try and seek input from this board as to, I mean, and I had no idea what a dollar will buy in terms of advertising and communication efforts. So that's why I think it'll be very helpful to maybe have a next step of meeting with Gretchen and uh, see how they do, because their, their needs are gonna be very similar, I think, to, to ours in terms of communication. Um, so basically we're looking at $150 an hour and, and you know, this, this $3,000 um, uh, a month, which is, you know, basically 20 hours a month. So I, I mean, to me, that struck me as, as too expensive, too overkill. 
um, I, his suggestion was to find an intern to go and, and find somebody who is a graphic designer who does this kind of work, be it a college student or, you know, I didn't even think of the high school, but that's a great idea too, right in our own township here. And that way he felt we could maximize our dollars, give some student opportunity to, to work with us and, and use their skill sets and, and, you know, maybe get it on mostly a volunteer type basis. So that's sort of where I am with it. I had one other person that was given to me um, not, not that long ago who, who works with um, Jenkins Arboretum. I don't know if you folks know of who that is. I don't, I don't have her name off the top of my head. But anyway, I thought that might be another person to reach out to to see what their costs and expenses would be. But what is this board's input? Do you feel, don't, do you feel like I do it at 3000 a month? It seems like real overkill for what we would want and need and could afford. I personally think so. And I really like the idea of having an intern, like maybe one of the local colleges and doing some yeah. type of internship. It'd be great for their resume, and it would be a win for us. Yeah, I, th I thought so too, Eileen. I'm, yeah. And as long as all of us maybe collectively could come up with the content, mm -hmm. and I loved your idea too, Gretchen, of working like with John or, or some of the other resident e experts mm -hmm. to help us flesh out articles and sort of fat che fact check for us. Mm -hmm. um, but m I think our, m at least my personal summit, because I'm not a marketing person, I'm a real estate person, so I don't really have the marketing background to put mm -hmm. together a game plan per se, unless maybe we just took baby steps and knew, okay, this, you know, whatever this, you know, this magazine is coming out, what do we want to put in it? Yeah. Y you know, and maybe, maybe I'll get more ideas too after I talk to Gretchen on how, what their overall budget and plan looks like for a year. Right. So Ginny, just to um, give you some background for that magazine, that if you want an article placed, you would just submit it to me. I would submit it to our staff. Okay. Who that's then easy enough. they are the ones that will have it posted in that magazine. Okay. We do have um, we work with them on a monthly basis. So we have so many pages okay. dedicated to us for that. So you could easily put something together where I want this in, you know, May. I want this in June. I want that okay, in July. Okay. You can do it in advance as well. Okay. You don't have to do it. Trish. Um, and that is at no cost. Okay. Yeah, that's great. But like, if we want to do a graphic, you know, there's so. I, I think rather than just having written word, you, you catch people's eye better with some kind of graphic. That's maybe where we could find an intern to help, you know, pretty it up kind of thing. And that may be where we can use Stephanie, the Conservancy's graphic designer. She and did. Stephanie didn't seem to think she could help us. Well, she's, a, she's a graphic designer. She's she can't do the content. She's not going to copy edit or mm -hmm. give you content. But if you give her all of that and, and say, you know, we want to mm -hmm. create something that's right. visually, you mm -hmm. know, okay. and impactful. I, yeah, and if she just created a... Yeah, and she could almost create like a master look for us, and then we just use that in various different forums. And, and you can, you know, you could use, Gretchen, can you use walk that. Um, they can't hear on TV here. Yeah. Yeah. People, if you push that right hand button, you can see the screen. You could, um, you know, I, there's, there's different things that you'll want mm -hmm. to cover. Let's just mm -hmm. take, for instance, Emerald Ashbore. Let's say she creates a flyer with, you know, that's designed mm -hmm. and it's got five images on it. Um, she designs it, she'll design it once, and then right. you have that right. to, exactly. to use again and again. Right. So, you, so you're not going to incur mm -hmm. costs again and again with that specific sure. um, messaging. Okay. So. I have a question about Radnor Lifestyles. Does the township pay to subscribe in that, or is that a... I was under the under, uh, understanding that that's a for-profit magazine. The, the I think manager, it is. it is the the manager. Uh, the what, manager. Not this one or not that one. The the one you have. It's so this one. The, the 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 company that puts that out. The articles that are written in, written in there for some 
advertisers and businesses in Radnor are paid for yeah. by them. Yeah, it's it's definitely a mix of businesses and then um, so like I, some I, township I, thing. So it is for profit. I it, think, though, the township gets X amount of wages for free. Yeah, it does say it's the official township. It's, it replaced that newsletter. So it's, it's an if the official township, Radnor right, right Township. It is the official, Matt, but it's a relationship that was forged for by a for-profit company. Correct. So I just want that to Correct. be clear that yes. that the that that's my. Does the conservancy get free pages? Yeah. No, you pay. No, we, we, we haven't. haven't. Oh, you haven't. So has anyone approached you for? Um, okay. One of uh, so the recycling. The recycling project that one of our interns did, we're, right. we're working with the township on that, and that has been in this a couple of times, which okay. has been great. Okay. So. Well, um, well, and I'm not sure what the, I don't know all of it. I, um, I serve on the Wayne Business Association board, and businesses, for-profit businesses, pay to advertise and write articles in that magazine. So. Not sure exactly where the town, what the township. I believe that there's an agreement with the township for so many pages, um, and each department can put something in monthly. It's it's actually a good business model because it gets to every resident. So yeah, that, I mean a, that's if you have a business, so that's it's thirty thousand people. That's a but lot. But it is of, a it yeah. is a for profit endeavor. I think the first thing is that we, we just need some content and some graphic design, and then we can, I right. think Ginny, Joe, and James already came up with a list of ways to get the word out on different fronts. So I think if we can figure that out first. So Ginny, you mentioned Jenkins Arboretum. If you want to contact them, I, will. I can also take the action to figure out, is it possible to get an intern, like, like a college intern? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah, you could advertise on your the township mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. But I just suggest, figure out you know what are what are the three or four most important things okay. that you want to message to the township okay and and work on the content okay. around that and one of them can be the ordinance yeah well, yeah exactly. and I think we came up in under yeah, our I goals think I, think I think we that's have that's on there listed yeah, yeah. on the second yeah page of the and agenda I'm happy to meet with you Virginia. okay, okay. So, Trish, is this the same thing, the Radnor Township newsletter? I just give you content for this or no? We don't do the newsletter. We only do the magazine. Oh. It's replaced it. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's weird. Okay. I thought I just got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, I think that's all I had unless any of you had co questions. Um, I'm good. I, I appreciate all your persistence in trying to figure out who can help us with content yes. and graphic design. So that's I didn't great. I think it would be so hard, but it's a little bit more of a needle in the haystack than yeah. I thought originally. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I had the same thinking. Okay, so item G then, Philippone, Bo Connor, La Maison track. Jack, do you want to give us an update? Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned last uh, meeting, I, don't, I know I mentioned last meeting that um, uh, the, I had written a letter to uh, Bob requesting uh, what the township was going to do on that, uh, in that area uh, this year so that we can look at volunteer efforts and maybe a budget, you know, budget type requests for handling what, whatever was not uh, planned by the township to, to do in that area. And uh, I still haven't gotten a response on that, so um, I'll just leave it up to the commission uh, whether they want me to, to uh, recontact Bob about that and why we didn't get a response on that and uh, if we're going to get a response on that. Uh, because I, I I don't see how we can, and even the town even the conservancy has had two out two volunteer efforts out there. So I think we all need to have an awareness of is the, is the township going to do anything on that area or not. Um, I've also uh, talked uh, to Matt and John about using our urban forest matrix to do a census out there of the trees that are left, 
so hopefully we can do that and we can have a really good map and picture of the trees that are there and the species and the condition of them. And I have no doubt whatsoever that half the trees that are standing there are probably half, mostly dead already, I, I would guess. Um, I also mentioned last meeting that, that the, the township did go out and Mark Dominic could let me know the township had gone out and attempted to cut a lot of the vines out there. And I went through there and they did cut a lot of the vines, but these are massive vines. These, these vines, some of them are 12 inches in diameter, literally. They're so thick around the trees that you can't even see the trunks of the trees. Um, and so a lot of how many trees were saved by that vine cutting and by our volunteer projects, when we go out and do the census, we'll, we'll have an idea of how many trees we possibly saved out there. Uh, that's where we are now. Now, last meeting, uh, I had brought to you guys a, um, brought to the commission a budget request that had been uh, given to me by uh, Barley Van Cleef, who's the, uh, she's with the Penn Horticultural Center, and she had given me uh, a budget uh, process, you know, the software to request uh, budgets. It was on a short deadline, and we agreed that I would try to do that, and I did try to do that. And I gave you guys all a little packet of, of the communications that I had. And I wasn't able to get enough information from the township to, to um, even start that process. So if we were to, let's say, a, a, a apply for a uh, grant for the, the um, Philippone uh, Bo Connor Lamazon tract. It would have to be a, a township project. We would have to have an I, a township um, project manager identified, and we would have to have an EIN for that person to even do a letter of, of intent to apply for a grant to work out there. And I couldn't get any of that from the township prior to the, the deadline for the letter of intent going. So that, it just goes to, sh and uh, I had requested also that uh, previous to this whole commission being formulated, and unfortunately guys, I, w I love that we have a full commission here, but a lot of the things that have occurred in the past, none of you were here except for Claire. Maybe Matt was here for some of it, and uh, Eileen may have been here for some of it. Uh, but I have a feeling, Eileen, you may not have been at some of the meetings where some of that occurred, but even though you may have been on the commission. But we did, uh, we did request that uh, the township get a, do a budget request, get a, uh, you know, a vine clearance contractors out to find out how much it would cost to clear the vines, really clear the vines out of there. And that wasn't followed up on. And Steve said to me that, um, sent me an email saying that um, we should have voted on that as a commission to ask the township to get a budget request for that job. Now, what we, d we did was we agreed to do that. We agreed, we all agreed as a we don't vote on every single thing here. I mean, we're all sitting here. So right now, if I say, if Steve is sitting here and I say, do you guys, we, I'd like to request a, you know, uh, Steve, that the township get an uh, estimate for the vine clearing at that, uh, the Bo Connor Philippone track, and we all say, and nobody objects to it, or somebody says, well, then we move forward. But what happens is if we don't do an official vote on it, later on, what's said is, well, we didn't, officially request that. So first of all, I would like for us to officially request the township do get a proposal, because we need to start getting this stuff into a, a budgetary type of, uh, something that can be defined budgetarily, what the problem is. And I, like I said, I apologize, because we've already done this. But I would like for us to request and uh, that um, the township, uh, get estimates and bids for having vine removal for that whole tract. And I, I make a motion we do that. I'm Thank not you. in favor of that. Because I don't think, 
I think we need to look at it holistically. We have many parks within Radnor Township. Why are we prioritizing this park over others? Second, if we go through the township, it may take us longer. So I'll just give you an alternate proposal because, Jack, I am in favor of saving the trees and clearing the vines. That, I think, is worthwhile. So I realize James isn't here, but I'm going to throw out his name anyhow. Just knowing that he's in the landscaping business, could he give us just a proposal? It would give us a cost estimate and a ballpark figure. And maybe we could just use that as an order of magnitude. I think that may be quicker than going through the township. Any further discussion on that? And we can also... Well, I, I, I believe we should look at the whole town, the township as a whole around the vining and devining and uh, park cleanup. I don't think we should just pick off one park. I think that that's a mistake. Uh, I think we ha the, the problem is more universal than one park. And so let's do it right. Let's. It, it was my understanding that somebody had come to the conclusion that that was the worst one. Is, have we not done an overall assessment of the park air all the parks yet? Well, Order Riccio is next to my house, and after you get off the ball field, um, that that whole back end of the park is full of vines too. So I, I just don't think anyone's been in these parks. Jack certainly has been in some of them, but mm -hmm. I think generally, I think all the parks need to be evaluated. I, I think my feeling is that the proposal is too specific and the township, again, uh, to reiterate, the, the Board of Commissioners are tasked with a lot of things. And if we start using up our chips, if you will, on a specific one piece, rather than getting the Board of Commissioners to see it as a whole piece, I think is not in the township's best interest. Well, Joe, do you have a, Joe, do you have a question? You look like you want to ask a question. <laughs> I want to make sure that you're brought up to speed on this. It's very important that you're educated on what's going on here. Yes, thank you, John. Yeah, I mean, you, John, could your firm give us an estimate? You are part of the township budget already. That, that would be right? a conflict. And oh. we, don't, we don't actually perform the work. We're just consultants. So it, it's a conflict. But I, I see Jack's concern for this. And, you know, we, we should address it somehow. I mean, would, would it, what would it cost to get an estimate? From somebody to do this. I mean, is there many firms that do this divining? Parks? There, there, there are many firms. There are specialists. In there, you yeah. got to understand it's a process. So what will have to happen is RFP will have to be drafted through Public Works, has to be reviewed, specifications sent out to three bidders. Okay, which can't send out to one bidder. We'd have to send out to three bidders, obtain the numbers, and then it comes back to us. You're looking at a couple couple month time frame, three to four months. This is a this is an area where we've already identified a massive problem. Uh, we've already had n numerous volunteer projects. Um, this is an area that sits right between two of our most prominent parks, uh, Bo Connor and Philippone. Fifty percent of the trees are dead already in this area. Of the 50% remaining, 50% of them are probably beyond recovery. So this is a crisis situation for that area uh, that has been identified. You start looking at the vines of the whole township, we're, we're, we're talking about a many, many, many year process to even to, and it would cost a fortune to have a contract that all out. I, I, this is an area that is within our parks. so. We're not just talking about vines in the whole township here. We're talking about an area that is part of our park system that is really under the maintenance responsibility of our parks, of our township. And uh, the estimate, I don't even see where that estimate would cost. So does John, Hemmel, would that cost a lot of money for that estimate? Yeah. yeah. No, be free. But, but, so but it's what's the, the problem? Time. It's, it's the labor. It's the township labor and the time. And it would be... We're not talking taking about more of a narrow view versus it. a larger view, um, and it's not part of one have of our the goals to approve something like this. So, uh, yeah, just one minute. Please. So parks, we have all a lot of parks. So we yeah. we look at them all differently and separately. And there's 
uh, capital improvement plans for you know, restrooms and benches and things. And then part of that capital improvement, which I've brought up for specifically for this one, Bo Connor um, and Philippone, uh, is to have the, that be put on record as something to consider. Um, what I think where we're, I think you were right, Jack, is that that is as, uh, been specified as an area that we can hone in on. But it, as a problem in the township, we need to go top down that this is the problem. Where is a place that we can actually address? And that's what I think. Well, you know, it, this could be like a little t uh, litmus test. I mean, we by looking at this problem and getting an estimate, we have an idea of, let's say, uh, what it would take to, to divine a similar area in other parts of the township. So it can be like a little test, but it's an area that needs to be saved now, not four years from now. And we know it needs to be saved now, and we know it's right in the middle of our parks. And all we're asking is for a free estimate. I don't get it. I don't get any resistance to it. I, I do, because for me, I would rather have a larger picture. I'd like to look at all the parks and then determine which one to prioritize. I must admit, playing devil's advocate, when you tell me 50% of the trees are already dead and the other 50% remaining, 50% of them are not recoverable, that tells me even if we divine everything, we only end up saving 25% of the trees. So well, I don't we, know if that- And then we can plant there too. Right, but I don't know if that makes we sense. Can, we I don't can't know, plant till the vines I don't know compared to willows and skunk hollow. I haven't been through the parks. I don't know is which it, one I would prioritize. Is, and, and the question is, is it's a that, holistic that it's a need. We know it's a need, and it's a need yeah. in a more places. The question is, is do we want to make a formalized proposal to the township? And I don't think so. No, I'm saying do we get an estimate? I'm asking that we get ask the township to get an estimate for what it would cost to, to, to remediate the vines in that area. That's all. I'm not sh for, for me, I'm not sure I'm ready to go there because I do tend to work bigger picture down to more narrow. So I would... I don't know if this All right, well, is my necessarily motion, if, the if right there are any part. other, if there's, I, if I can, I don't want to, but unless there's a lot more discussion, does anybody have any other discussion they want to add? I think we just put it to a vote. Laura, Laura wanted to say something. Oh, Laura, yeah, you sorry. Know. Thank I you. Just, I was just going to say, I think the, we have worked with Parks and Rec on this issue because honestly, in my opinion, this is a Parks and Rec scenario. We've asked them to go to every park and identify, and we have each Parks and Rec person kind of has their territory, mm -hmm. and then they reported back to the condition. All the parks are in great need. There is not just one park, mm -hmm. and this is something that needs to be looked at as a larger picture to be able to then put this, I mean, honestly, we are so behind. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can save anything. Mm -hmm. To be able to get all of the estimates and then to get the work done, uh, I don't. There's just bigger problems right now. Mm -hmm. um, but my wish is to actually get a summit meeting together with Shade Tree, with Parks and Rec, with Public Works and EAC, um, and obviously John, and to really discuss this, because it is a mm -hmm. issue that dovetails together. And we need to then, then maybe prioritize after we understand what parks, and it's maybe not just one park, maybe it's three parks mm -hmm. instead of the eight. Um, so it's a. It's such a big picture. We've been trying to push this. Nobody really gets it unless mm -hmm. they're walking through the parks and mm -hmm. understands it. I personally walk through the Willows and Skunk Hollow. To me, that's the most important part. Mm -hmm. Yours is Bo Connor. Yours might be Hartford. Whatever it is, um, you are never going to get a unanimous vote, and the BOC is going to say no because the ward that their park is is more important than the ward in their that park. So you need to start top, big, mm -hmm. and then come down. Mm -hmm. That's fine. My only thought about that is, though, to Jack's point, yes, I understand and agree with this top-down concept, and everybody has their favorite park and all this and that, but at some point, you still need to understand dollars and cents. And you can't make any decisions until you know dollars and cents on any of this. So 
to get an isolated estimate free on one particular park, I don't care which one it is, any one of them. It's a litmus test, right? Exactly. It's a learning process. And then process. you can, ex uh, you know, extrapolate what that square footage or whatever was for that estimate and that condition right. yeah. and get a ballpark. So at least, yeah, we're not like three or four years out trying to do the big picture. In the yeah. meantime, we're losing more and more trees. I have a suggestion. And meanwhile, um, then, well, excuse me. The meanwhile, then I can, I can go, if we, this becomes something we're looking at as a township, I can request money for it. We need to start requesting money for these kind of things. We need to start somewhere, Laura. Yeah. I, I, I have a All suggestion right. is that one, um, we have a document through Parks and Rec that has all of the parks listed and it has the capital improvements and it has our comments and needs. So each, oh, each Parks and Rec uh, member goes, has their stewardship parks and we write these down. It has been noted, I happen to have Bo Connor and Philippone. So it has been noted that their are invasive vines, and I wish I had the document to show it to you. Mm -hmm. Here is my suggestion. Um, why don't I go back to Parks and Rec and suggest, and that's re the reason why I chose to stay on this board. We used to just do send one liaison each month, and I decided that I thought it was really important to dovetail the two boards, because mm -hmm. they overlap for this reason, Jack, is why don't I suggest that we ask each person to look at their park and their stewardship and see if their if Parks and Rec wants to suggest to the Board of Commissioners, can we get some estimates for some of these areas that need help? I'm okay with that. The Board of Commissioners would ultimately approve it, but so Tammy and Bob come to our meetings at Parks and Rec, and we have these conversations and discussions, but if we brought this up, and I asked for an agenda item on Parks and Rec as something mm -hmm. to consider as part of our stewardship, we could then ask the Board of Commissioners, can we get some estimates for some of these areas? And as a township, they, it's as a whole township, we decide, on where to focus on some of these areas, which I have been doing, actually. I want, I want you to know that I have it, it's noted that, that, my, that the parks that I frequent and look, you know, stewardship, I have noted there is a vine issue and it would be, and we've been working on it. So it's not, but I hear what you're saying about the dollars and cents and the township and the um, public works, they're taxed, overtaxed. So it is very difficult. So let me, so look, look, to get some closure on this, I, I, we, there's no reason we can't, you know, hit them from all angles, as they use the football analogy. Okay, so th there's, there's more than one way to do something, and there's ma many ways, approaches, and I think they should all be taken on this. But I'm making a motion, and it's just a request from our commission, an innocent request, Knowing the problem that we have identified now for two years, and all you guys, I hope you go out and look at this area, uh, that we at request that um, the township get an estimate for what it would cost to remove the invasive vines from this tract. And it was seconded. Okay, is there any further discussion? Any further discussion? I'm still not in agreement it with It doesn't this. matter. This is discussion. We're having, we, we, when the discussion's over, you vote on a motion. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize yeah. the process, okay? I'm you, good. That's you make a motion, you second it, you discuss it, and then you, if the discussion's over, you vote on it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Now, this is a twenty five page. So. This is going through Parks and Rec. This is going really through Steve. No, it's coming from our Parks and Rec. Yeah, it's so, coming so. from. No, it's coming from our commission. Yeah, Jack, no, I'm, I'm, I'm clear. So, so now I understand the process, thank you. So we wanna vote on the motion that Jack just proposed, that we as the Shade Tree Commission will request the township to get an estimate to remove the vines at the park listed, Philippone, Beau Connor, La Maison Tract. Right. So all in favor, aye, two, three, four. Okay, that's a majority, let's do it. Okay, Trish, thank you everybody. Okay, great. And by the way, we already did this. <laughs> to see you now. Okay. We've already, we're in, in a previous iteration of our commission, we've already asked the township to do this. But now okay. they're saying what well, we Jack, can't pull this. this topic is closed. Guys, I'm going to move us forward. It's a gorgeous night. This is a ridiculous place to be still talking about this.
budget, we covered that. I follow up on the status of 941 Wooten. I'm not really sure who can cover this. I can. Um, Go ahead, John. Just recently, we went out to 941 Wooten Road. Obviously, they were in violation for multiple items, one being tree protection fence, overgrading and compaction around the root system of various trees, um, removal of a few trees without a permit. Um, unfortunately, the applicant and the home builder has gone through numerous engineers and GCs, um, some of which have dropped the ball. To date, they have Mamani on board, Mamani Engineering, um, who is picking up the slack and really working um, diligently to get this all caught up. They have um, since had an architect go out. They're redesigning the tree pres preservation fence, which is going back up. Um, They're going to remove the trees that have been damaged. They have been told that they have to replace those trees. They are going to show it on the plan. There's a few trees out front that were currently disturbed through soil disturbance. Those trees as well are going to be reviewed and if they decline are going to be replaced. So we are moving forward. We're hoping to have their report from their arborist on a few trees by May 25th. And after that, I'll be providing the letter to you guys on the uh, final product. Okay, great. Any questions? Okay, super. Okay, that brings us to hazardous trees, which is basically provided for information. And number 11, tree removal by Radnor Township tr uh, t staff, which is also provided for information. Typically, we just check with John to see any concerns. John, about those? Okay, great. Public participation, we kind of did that on the front end with Laura and Gretchen. And that's it. Anything else before we close the meeting? Okay, great. Enjoy the nice weather, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yep.